Slow cooking is one of the best weapons in the chef's arsenal. Not only is it easy, it's also an incredible way to transform meat into mouth-wateringly melting dishes. Mastering the art of slow cooking is something every cook should learn. First up, my phenomenal slow-cooked beef short ribs. Slow cooking is a brilliant way of getting lots of extra depth and intensity into your dishes. The secret is to lock in all those flavours at the start and let the ingredients do their thing as it cooks. These are beef short ribs, and there's basically five to six bones across there. And as the short rib cooks, it sticks to that bone. The bone implants flavour, and the meat just sort of melts. Cooked slowly, gives it that nice level of intensity. Slice alongside the bone, straight down. You can see that marbling? That sort of disappears and disintegrates. I'm cooking them in a roasting tray. Get it on the heat until nice and hot. Season the beef short ribs beautifully. Olive oil in, bone on the top. We'll start colouring that in. Really important to give the beef short ribs a really nice sear. If you didn't brown the meat off, it goes in the oven and it looks like boiled meat. So you really want that nice, dark, rich colouring. Just cut the garlic in half, slide that down the side. That's going to give that beef an amazing flavour. To give body to the sauce, stir in a heaped teaspoon of tomato puree. I'm just hitting the bottom of the pan with that tomato puree. And we call it cooking out the tomato puree. Otherwise, it just goes in there raw, and it gives this sort of tartness to the braised short ribs. Red wine in. Don't use an expensive bottle of red wine. There's no need. Bring the wine up to the boil and reduce it. This burns off the alcohol and concentrates the flavour. It makes a big difference when you reduce the red wine down by half, because it gives that nice, dark, rich intensity. Look at my garlic. That is just going to sweeten everything up. Incredible. Stock in. Beef stock, perfect. Chicken stock, fine. Just to about an inch underneath the beef short ribs. Bring it up to the boil. To lock in all that flavour as the beef ribs slow cook, cover them so they braise from the bottom and steam from the top. Into the oven, two and a half hours. 170 to 180 degrees. In she goes. The great thing about slow cooking is you do most of the work in advance and then put your feet up. Five or ten minutes before the beef short ribs come out of the oven, start your garnish. This is light cured pancetta. I want nice thick lardons, nice big thick sticks of crispy bacon. These are delicious chestnut mushrooms. I'm not going to slice them, I'm just going to cut them in half. But look at the colour on those lardons now. All the white, raw fat has disappeared. The lardons have shrunk right down. And all we've got there now is the proper bacon. Mushrooms in. Beautiful. So the mushrooms get seasoned from the bacon. I'm pan frying these separately to the beef so they remain crisp and have a different texture. Mm. Leave that to cool down. Now, this is like Christmas Day for me when you unwrap that foil. Wait to see what's underneath it. <laughs> wow. They smell incredible. Lift and place on your tray. Mm. Beautiful. To make a fantastic, rich, deep sauce, press the soft roasted garlic through a sieve into the cooking juices. With all that nice pureed garlic coming through there. Because that is going to make the most amazing flavour. <laughs> Scrape all of that off the sieve. Nice. And then just start sieving all that lovely braising liquor. Whoa. In. That smells delicious. Take your sauce and just glaze. Do them individually. They deserve that respect. Spoon on your bacon and your mushrooms. 
Beautiful. Be generous with these mushrooms. I'm telling you, they taste amazing. Flat leaf parsley. I want that freshness over those amazing ribs. Incredible. Never ever be embarrassed about going to your butcher and asking for cheap cuts because the results are incredible. Amazing beef braised short ribs with bacon and mushrooms. It's wise to save leftover wine for cooking. My tip is to freeze the remaining wine in freezer bags or ice cube trays. It's great in stocks and sauces. When you need to chill wine fast, simply add a large handful of salt to your ice bucket. The salt reduces the freezing point of the water, which will chill your wine in six minutes flat. A delicious saffron flatbread with mussels. It doesn't get any healthier than that. First job, the super easy saffron flatbread. Put the saffron into the bowl and a couple of teaspoons of hot water. That starts to infuse the saffron, and so you can maximise on the colour across your flatbreads. To make the dough, simply add plain flour, a pinch of salt and pepper to a bowl, and then pour in a dash of olive oil. That makes the dough nice and silky and rich. Your saffron water, and you'll see how concentrated it is now. And then you'll need cold water. Then simply knead to bring the dough together. Mop up all your flour. You can see now, the saffron's activated. It's got that really nice colour. Beautiful. Use your wrist and just knead it nicely. What we'll do now is smoothing out the gluten strands. Push and tuck in. Push and tuck in. And each and every time you do this, getting softer, you just sort of form like this perfect, beautiful dough. It smells delicious. That saffron is very powerful. Now, sit that in your bowl, cover it with clean film, let it rest for 10 to 15 minutes. This relaxes the dough, making it easier to roll and gives it time to infuse with the saffron. I'm going to cut that into three and then roll them nice and thinly. Now, lightly flour the surface. And then... Just bring that to like a perfect ball on the board. Once you've got that nice ball, your rolling pin, and just roll it out. Now, it doesn't get any simpler than that. And then just lightly flour that on top. And a little salt. Cooking the flatbread is easy. Just pop in a hot, dry pan, and they're ready in minutes. As it hits the pan, it starts to blister. She's ready for turning. Beautiful. Get that colour on there. Now you want it nice and crisp, almost blistering on both sides. And because it's nice and thin, it's cooked. Once browned on both sides, just cool on a rack. Flatbread's done. Now onto the mussels. Now the secret behind cooking great mussels is in the speed you cook them. The key is to chop and prep your ingredients before you start cooking. First thing, pancetta. I want it quite chunky. If you can't get pancetta, I always like to use a sort of streaky bacon because I want to sort of render all that flavour out the streaky bacon. Now, tomatoes, garlic and chilli. Cherry tomatoes, they're just going in whole. The garlic, just crush the garlic. So all that flavour comes out. Chilli, I want some heat in here. That's everything prepped. Now to get it cooked. A little touch of olive oil. Pancetta in. Pancetta takes moments. Once it's brown and crisp, Put your garlic, chilli and whole cherry tomatoes into the pan. Mussels go in. OK. And I'm using dry sherry. I think it works better in this recipe than white wine, which is classically used at this stage. Then oregano, finely chopped, stalks and all. Oregano on. 
And then just give that a little mix. And we'll see those muscles start to open. Lid goes on. You've got to lock in that flavour. Got to lock in that heat. The mussels will take four to five minutes to steam. In the meantime, cut your flatbreads into strips. Crispy and crunchy. Now, the mussels. Wow, that is incredible. My goodness me. Now, that is one lunch I definitely don't want to miss. Healthy and delicious. Doesn't get any better than that. Incredible. Steamed mussels with saffron flatbreads, made in minutes and packed with protein and vitamins. This is one fast food meal that really is healthy.